it's late 1983 and you want a fun electronic game for Christmas. Grandstand have you covered, but which one? Well, how about their latest model, the futuristic looking Firefox F7? And that's what my great friend Alan must have asked for, because wind forward 37 years and a clear out of his parents' loft resulted in this find. Sadly, it doesn't work at all. It's dirty, worn and scratched. At some time, it was left against a hot radiator and the back is melted. It would be great to restore this so he can relive his youth and show his daughter and son just what mobile gaming looked like when he was a lad and let them compare it to their Nintendo DS. We start with the usual strip down and remove the batteries I tested it with. Thankfully it was not stored with batteries and the connections are not corroded. That's one less task. The joystick is missing its screw cap, so that will need replacing. There's a strange brown residue inside. Was something spilled on it? Or is this leaked capacitor juice? Take your time to figure out how to dissemble items and never force anything. More brown gunk. And it's where the grill is, so probably a spill. Checking continuity of the power circuit is a quick first check, but it seems fine. The great thing about making a video when taking something apart is it's a great aid memoir for how it should go back together. The battery connections are securely clipped in place. Desoldering the connections lessens the chance of damage. What is this brown gunk, Alan? The game uses a Fresnel lens, a cheap technology commonly used in the 80s to magnify small displays. Concentric rings of rich plastic act as prisms to magnify the image it is placed in front of. Before I clean anything, I want to ensure I can get the game working. A probe around the power transistor shows something doesn't look correct. So it's a simple task to unsolder the two transistors and test them out of the circuit. This task is made even simpler with a cheap multifunction tester. The main power transistor fails the test, but the smaller transistor appears undamaged. I tested the capacitors too, and as one was very out of spec, I replaced them all. Many years in a loft during hot summers may have dried them out. The replacement NEC D882 NPN power transistor checks out fine. And when everything is soldered back in place, we thankfully have a working game. But I don't want to give it back just working. I want to return some of its great looks, while not over-restoring it and, shall we say, removing its patina. More of the gunk and a little stubborn it was to remove too. The back of the circuit board was clean to remove the flux residue. Then it was the control panel's turn. It's constructed much like a remote control, with rubber conductive pads and sliding metal contacts. In use, the spring pivot for the joystick looked to have lost some spring. A gentle stretch gives it some oomph back. So love it or hate it, it's time to clear the decks, don a pair of fetching rubber gloves and crack out the warm soapy water and a range of brushes. The outer case shows signs of many a long gaming session. With all the parts clean, we can see which needs some further TLC. I try some targeted heat and a roller to try and restore the shape where it was melted. I have limited success. I guess this is part of its history after all. In pinball circles, the Novus range of plastic care products are well considered 
and as easy to use as a dusty bin 321. Number 3 for removing heavy scratches. Number 2 for polishing to a smooth finish. Number 1 for a positively slick look. Always test the product somewhere it won't be seen. Nothing melted or discoloured, so we're safe to continue. The bare plastic is given the number 3 treatment. But the silver painted sections are only freshened up with the number 2 polish. Only the flat outside of the lens needs polishing to remove distracting scratches. The number 1 finisher all over the whole case gives a nice sheen. With a broken screw mount glued back into position, it's time to reassemble. One last task is to replace the missing screw cover. A right sized washer is used as a template. I have some large plastic self adhesive covers that might suffice. With some cutting, sanding, colouring, and a little spray of lacquer, it finishes the look nicely. One working, polished Firefox F7 to return to its original owner. Retaining the worn edges and labels shows it was once well loved. And the back still has the memories of a close encounter with a radiator. But it should still look great on display. How well does this game play though? Let's switch it on and see. A short rendition of the Thunderbirds theme welcomes us. An eclectic collection of music snippets are used throughout the game. Whether they were licensed or not is anyone's guess. The vacuum fluorescent display looks as bright and vibrant as likely when it was new. The blue and red arrows indicate the ionosphere, which is the only zone in which you can destroy the enemy ships. A convenient topological MacGuffin to hide a limitation of the technology. The game has six phases, and in this first phase you must simply destroy the TIE fighter star enemies while avoiding the blue radiation walls at the side. This phase lasts 60 seconds, regardless of the number of enemies destroyed. Apparently energy is lost when firing, but I don't let that stop me emulating a good old fashioned auto fire joystick. The light smears towards the centre are an artefact of a lens, and there is no flickering to the human eye. Wagner's Ride of the Valkyries introduces Phase 2, which reverses the enemy's direction while giving us red asteroids to avoid. This phase also lasts 60 seconds before Phase 3 is entered. The iconic TIE Fighter attack music from Star Wars sets the scene for Phase 3. No more asteroids or walls of radiation, just enemies that have learned where the fire button is. And you need to destroy 8 of them to continue to phase 4, but you must play this level for a minimum of 70 seconds. Phase 4's musical intro is a classical piece that escapes me. Here we see the enemy's base for the first time, and again 8 fighters to destroy and a minimum of 70 seconds of gameplay.
Phase 5 is similar to Phase 1, but with the 8 ships and 70 seconds of gameplay rule. The final phase, 6, has just the central base section from Phase 4, and this time it fires back. Score 8 hits and the game is won, looping back to Phase 1 to show how futile your efforts were. Unfortunately, I didn't reach these final stages, but all the levels are described in the instruction manual, and at 8 pages is far more in depth than most manuals I received with my computer games. A resounding blast of Jerusalem signifies my untimely end. So until next time, goodbye. Let me see your identification. We don't need to see his identification. Follow me. Move on. Move on.